Chapter 7, Animal Nutrition. What is nutrition? I have told you that class that nutrition is the process by which organisms obtain energy in the form of food for their growth, repair, growth and maintenance. Right. And I told you that nutrition has, there are that classification, but you don't need to know uh, that uh, all the classification you need to know means even memorize huh. so but you need to understand the different types of nutrition like we mainly we have divided the nutrition into two types one is autotropic nutrition where organisms are getting their energy hmm, uh, by themselves so auto auto means self tropic means level okay. so in the world, green plants are different from all other organisms in being of the autotrophic characteristic. So this type of nutrition where organisms make the switch off your camera from the it's okay. Any problem, girls? No. Okay. okay. No. Now. No. So. <coughs> so when that uh, that organisms are making their own food from the simple inorganic materials like carbon dioxide and water with the help of sunlight, all green uh, that someone's uh, that uh, who is opening this all. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is computer? Who is sharing this computer screen? Not me. Excuse, huh, excuse me. Someone's uh, that computer screen is here. I'm seeing. Please uh, that switch off this. Huh, now that from simple inorganic materials like carbon dioxide and water with the help of sunlight. And all green plants are autotropic. They use light as a source of energy. They are also called photoautotropic. And the bacteria, there are a few cyanobacteria, algae, they are all, you know, that uh, have this kind of nutrition. Now, I want to tell you about heterotropic nutrition. This is a type of nutrition where an organism make their own food from simple inorganic uh, that cannot cannot make their own food from the simple inorganic materials which depend on other food. So this type of nutrition we have divided into three uh, that way. One is saprotropic nutrition. One is uh, one is uh, parasitic nutrition. One is polyzoic nutrition. Mm -hmm. Someone still that uh, open their uh, that uh, front page of their laptop. Mrs. Amira. Huh? Amira, can you hear me? How to close this? Amira, could you please close this? Someone is showing is sharing their her computer for a screen. It even opens up Facebook. Yeah. Amira. Who is this A05RA? Amira, Amira. Amira. Uh, then it's definitely her. Um, it's my father. <laughs> Amira. He's sharing the Zoom. He was using the Facebook to share the Zoom, so. Uh, no. Sorry, miss. So, shall I stop participating? Uh, it's okay. That's good. Now, finally, I have to stop. This girl is not listening. Anyway, uh, I hope you will mention you the can discipline. Keep out. Uh -huh. Don't share your Facebook or your picture here. This is official class and you have to maintain. Let's start uh, the saprotropic nutrition. Any organism that feeds by absorbing dead organic matter are called saprotrophs. And all the bacteria, many bacteria, fungus, they have this saprophytic uh, nutrition. Now, 
One type of nutrition I told you that the organism derives their food from the body of other living organism where they're staying and getting the nutrients from the blood of that organism where, where they're staying. This is all that usually we call the organism where they're staying is the host and this type of organism is the parasite. So this nutrition we called parasitic nutrition. <laughs> Holozoic nutrition. Now, this is a type of uh, nutrition where organisms are getting their or complex organic food materials into the body by the process of insertion. I have told you insertion means you have taken the food inside your mouth. That is called insertion. This ingested food has digested through a complex process. Then the food has molecule has been absorbed, broken down in the process of respiration and you are getting energy. This is actually for uh, that uh, all the mammals and many other organisms are having holozoic nutrition. This is the classification of nutrition. I have told you that day. And I told you what is balanced diet. Girls, balanced diet is not same for everyone. Balanced diet is the diet which contain all the essential nutrients in the right amount and right proportion. And it contain uh, uh, that adequate amount of carbohydrates, protein, fats, vitamins, minerals, trophies, and water. And nutritional needs uh, that depends on your age, your gender, your exercise, your growth, pregnancy, lactation, climate, illness, and also your body mass. So <coughs> females, they have, uh, you know, that uh, they tend to get the lower requirement than male because the average, uh, that female uh, that body has less mass than male. So due to the less mass, they demand also less energy intake. However, an inactive female may have higher energy requirement than an uh, that uh, active uh, inactive uh, female uh, may uh, that active female may have higher energy requirement than an inactive male, even though they have same age. So most of the energy that you will be seeing that uh, especially those childs are growing the growing ill child they do not need all type of uh, that nutrients uh, in a high amount, especially the protein. They need more protein compared to other race people per kg body weight hmm, uh, that uh, they the adults. And that, you know, the pregnant women, they also need extra protein, calcium, iron, and folic acid in her diet for the development of the fetus. And the mother, those who are feeding their child, we call them lactation mom. And this uh, type of uh, that uh, mom, those who are feeding their child, they need more protein, calcium, vitamins to produce milk of adequate quality and quantity for the development of the baby. And so, and even that due to the climate, due to the sickness, due to the body mass, this type of uh, that uh, energy requirement varies. And always remember that fat gives almost twice the amount of energy than the carbohydrates. One gram <coughs> carbohydrate or protein can provide a 16 to 17 kilojoule where one fat, uh, one gram fat will give you 37 kilojoule. So we should, uh, you know, that uh, careful about the consumption of fat hmm, per day, not more than, suppose uh, that, uh, what is the, you know, that uh, if you want to, the recommended every person needs. Can you zero explain point. it again? Yes, yes. I'll show you the calculation. Suppose uh, that uh, one gram carbohydrates is giving you six uh, carbohydrate or protein can provide you 16 to 17 kilojoule, but fat can give you 37 kilojoule so that you can, you don't uh, need to, uh, that uh, uh, the consumption of fat should be careful. And World Health Organization has recommended that an average person need zero point. 0 0.57 57 gram zero, 0 0.57 grams grams of protein proteins uh, for every kilogram of the body weight
every kg of your body weight. Suppose if a person is uh, body mass is 70 kg, imagine 70 kg is the body mass. So what is the requirement for this person's uh, that amount of protein? How much protein that person should take every day? So 70 multiply 70 multiply 0 0.57 and you will get 30 39.9 yes so these are the amount of protein a person who is having 70 kg body weight he should take so this is the you know that <clears throat> about 39.9 is about 40 grams right so girls this way we can find out that amount of protein we need if you eat less, it will hamper your growth because things are needed to repair hmm, the remaining functions of protein in your body. Ah, now, uh, the, after that, I told you about the malnutrition. Uh, girls, this is the result of not eating a balanced diet. You are eating too much or you are eating too less. Hmm, a diet that could be a lacking of one or more key nutrients. So whenever you are eating too much food, that leads to obesity. This can lead high blood pressure, diabetes, stress on your joint. And finally, socially, that of these people are always rejected. So social rejection is also a big reason for, uh, that, uh, for which created some psychological and mental problem also. Too much animal fat in uh, any person's diet can increase the risk of coronary heart diseases. Too little or not getting enough food is called starvation. It restricted their growth and development, also reduced <laughs> the diseases. Extreme slimming, uh, that uh, course, uh, you know that uh, extreme, uh, that uh, some, uh, that especially some, uh, many of the models and many girls, they're thinking that they look fat. So they are not eating the necessary amount of nutrients they need. So for a long time, if you are not taking your essential balance that nutrients and you are not taking your balanced diet for a long time, huh? so this type of thing we call extreme uh, slimming diets hmm, and lack of carbohydrates, huh? this will cause anorexia nervosa. And this type of people, I told you yesterday, one model, 21 years old, her body weight was 18 kilo and she passed away due to the uh, one kind of disease we call anorexia nervosa. Severe, you know, that slimming diet. So better to have proper diet every time. Lack of protein also causes a disease we call that quashiogor. What is it? This is actually if you are not taking, you know, that uh, sufficient amount of protein in your diet for a long time. And sometimes it uh, causes often uh, due to the poverty. Sometimes it also causes due to the lack of knowledge because the right kind of food, what kind of food contain the uh, protein. Huh. If you have some people don't understand this, they are cons uh, the consuming more carbohydrate and they are not taking uh, that protein regularly, they might have this. This type of problem we are seeing in the young children below five years and you have seen a picture from your textbook. So the underweight, <coughs> dry skin, pot belly, weakness, irritability, this is their effect. And another thing is marasmus, due to very poor diet and inadequate carbohydrate as well, well, as well as lack of protein. And severe lack of energy causes this marasmus and you will be seeing that the child body, uh, that the uh, weight becomes so low that you will be seeing that only uh, that uh, bone and top of their medial layer of skin, no muscle development actually. So lack of carbohydrates and protein causes these two types of diseases. You should know the name and effect of these two diseases. And now I want to tell you about lack of fiber, which causes uh, that uh, bowel cancer and constipation. And now I want to ask you, do you know the differences between malnutrition and starvation? Anybody can you answer me? malnutrition and starvation can anyone answer me 
Starvation is when you don't eat, like you skip food or you don't get enough food. And mm. malnutrition. Lack of food, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, um, malnutrition. <laughs> okay, you say? So starvation is the massive lack right. of food which decreases your body weight right and, and malnutrition yeah. malnutrition is the lack of the nutrients yeah taking more or less than the body requirement <laughs> right now i told you about the vitamin d uh, that uh, the sources i told you butter milk cheese egg yolk liver fish oil see and natural uh, that fats in the skin can also convert it to vitamin d by sunlight and why do you need vitamin D? You need vitamin D for absorbing calcium, for making your bones and teeth prevent rickets. And in this disease, that bone becomes very soft and deformed. And uh, if the adult person have deficiency of vitamin D, they will develop uh, a disease. They will suffer severe pain in their uh, joint. We call it uh, osteomalacia. And uh, that uh, I told you about the calcium sources are very good sources uh, of calcium are milk, cheese, yogurt, fish. And you need this calcium for your strong bone and tip. And also it has uh, uh, that it plays an essential part in the normal blood clotting. When I will explain transportation chapter, you'll be understanding how calcium is helping in blood clotting. And these also needed for the chemical changes for uh, which make the muscle contract for the transmission of nerve impulses. I have explained yesterday, the last class, that how uh, that uh, nerve impulses are wrapped with a fat layer, which we called uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that to prevent the leakage and makes the transmission of nerve impulses faster. We called it myelin shape. That also actually uh, that uh, your fat Hmm, is needed. So every time if you are thinking that uh, fat is not needed, no girl, some amount of fat you need for the insulation of your nerve fiber. And iron, the very good sources, liver, red meat, egg, brown rice, spinach and other dark green vegetables. This is used to make hemoglobin, prevent anemia. Vitamin C, I told that citrus fruits like oranges, lemon, fresh green. Miss, milk. what is anemia? Anemia means uh, that, see, hemoglobin, what is the function of the hemoglobin? Hemoglobin, uh, that uh, uh, when hemoglobin combined with the oxygen, when you breathe in, you are getting oxygen, right? This oxygen has been supplied through the blood and then from the blood, hemoglobin. Red blood cell has hemoglobin. It combined with the oxygen and becomes oxyhemoglobin. This oxyhemoglobin uh, that uh, send this oxygen to every body cell. When your body cell get this oxygen, they can break down the nutrients like amino acid, glucose, fatty acid and glycerol. And in presence of oxygen, when they will break down that process we call aerobic respiration. And that will release energy and that energy we are using every time which keeps us alive. So if less oxygen huh, will supply if you have less hemoglobin. If you have lack of iron in your diet, your hemoglobin level will be low and your, your body cell will not get sufficient amount of oxygen. So you will be tired. The fatigue will be every time. And this disease will call anemia. You will not get the sufficient amount of energy to do your work. So this type of disease we called anemia so if you take sufficient amount of iron in your diet you can prevent this disease called anemia but you can see yes yes i i once had loss of iron and my doctor said it was anemia mm -hmm. is it really called anemia the loss of iron yes it means there's azara uh, that uh, that as you have lack of iron, it means you have to be careful that you are taking every day red meat, liver, dark green vegetables. Every day you have to take because if you are anemic, anemic patient do not have the energy huh, that to do the, especially you are a student, you need to work a lot. So uh, that for this reason, you need energy and anemic patient always feels tired. So. Always remember that you should take 
you know, that uh, all kind of foods. And if you have lack of iron means you have to be uh, that, the, especially that there, uh, there are green vegetables, egg, brown rice also, there, spinach. This thing, if you're taking regularly, of course, within few days, your iron level will go up and your, your anemia problem will be reduced. Miss, Sometimes I don't doctors are giving more. supplementary tablet also, iron tablet also have to take if the deficiency level is very uh, that low. Yes. But I'm fine now. I had it back in grade seven, alhamdulillah. Oh, now you're okay. It means you are careful about your diet, alhamdulillah. Vitamin C, this is, you know, all the type of citrus fruits, oranges, lemons, uh, fresh green vegetables, tomatoes, you will get it. And this, I told you, this work as a coenzyme. Hmm. This act as a catalyst, hmm. which in the cell respiration. So, and if you are not taking this kind of a vitamin C, you will get a disease we called scurvy. Scurvy, you know, that, uh, that leading to bleeding under the skin, particularly at the joint, where it, it will be swollen, bleeding gums, and poor healing of the own. So vitamin C help to improve your immune system. Now COVID-19, although it's in, uh, that everywhere in the world, to all the doctors are telling huh, to take healthy, balanced diet. You know why? Because to boost up your immune system. And they are telling regularly that citrus fruits or vitamin C contain the vegetables the people should take every day to boost up their immune system because virus, if you want to fight with the virus, immune system is the only way if there is no medicine, right? And this vitamin C also prevent this uh, scurvy and vitamin C also make a stretchy protein. We called it collagen, which bond the cell together like a skin, blood vessel and other lining surface of the body. And if, uh, if you're taking every day a uh, lots of vitamin C, it will not store in the body, girls. You should take every day your required amount. If you're taking more vitamin C, it will not store in the body because our body cannot store vitamin C. It will come out from your body. Huh. So uh, that uh, you Why can't it store? You, uh, that cannot be stored in the body. Daily intake is needed. Uh, our body cannot store. Like our body cannot store amino acid, right? Now, uh, that vitamin C, another name is uh, that uh, ascorbic acid. And uh, fiber, I told you dietary fiber. Huh. <coughs> that the way the cellulose present in the plant cell wall, it cannot digest it by your body that you don't have the cellulase enzyme, but it has a great role. Hmm. You will get the fiber from all type of vegetables, fruits, whole milk, bread. Huh. It prevents constipation, it prevents bowel cancer, and also your colon will be in health, healthy condition. Uh, so this was our first class. I hope you understood this. And if you, under, uh, if you understood properly, I will go in question number nine. Any question from you girls? Um, Miss, give us to check, please. Yeah, sure. If you want to take one or two minutes, you can. Hmm. All the sources, and their role of, in their body, you need to uh, uh, that know very, you need to understand and you have to memorize this, the sources and effect of different types of vitamins and the deficiencies also. Yes, girls, question number nine. If you don't have any, uh, that question, it, I hope that you understood uh, from question one to eight, now I'll start nine. Is there anyone who has confusion? Okay, let me start. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah, let me start question number nine. See, uh, I have started. You're just a thing, right? Yes, yes. Yes, Saida, any question? Uh, no, miss. Okay. Now, I have given you a few definitions like insertion. I told you taking substances like food or drink, any that, uh, that uh, uh, the food thing or uh, that any drink you have taken through the mouth. This is insertion. Girls, I'm not talking about the biting or swallowing. No, just taking this uh, that food substances or any kind of 
uh, that drinks inside your mouth, that is insation. Okay, and I have given you one definition that is mechanical digestion. Mechanical digestion, the breakdown of food molecule into small pieces without chemical change. Girls, remember, into small pieces. Hmm. Uh, that uh, this type of uh, that food, just you are changing physically. The large piece of the food molecule turn into small pieces. This is called mechanical digestion. Chemical digestion, the breakdown of large insoluble food molecules into a small soluble molecule so that your body still can use it. Most probably chemical digestion happens in pillars of enzyme. So what is the differences between mechanical digestion and chemical digestion? Mechanical digestion break down the food molecule into small pieces. Uh, uh, and girls, we have 10 more minutes. After that, we will upgrade. Okay, you will get the link again. So you will be connected with us again. Okay, so chemical digestion means the breakdown of large insoluble molecule into soluble form. So mechanical digestion do not make the food molecule soluble form, but chemical digestion make the food molecule soluble form. Mechanical digestion, there was no chemical change and there was, enzyme was not working on it. Chemical digestion, enzymes are working and the food has been changed chemically. So these all you will be understand more uh, that uh, when I will explain the digestion process in different parts of our body. Now, absorption means after digestion, when food molecules has been absorbed, hmm, uh, the movement of the small food molecules and ions through the wall of the intestine into the blood. When this food molecule will be absorbed, there are processes also, I'll explain. Huh, this is called absorption. Assimilation means after absorption, that food molecule will come to your uh, the body cell. Your body cell will break down and use it uh, for, for uh, to give you energy and becoming part of your body cell, right? This is the assimilation. The movement of the digested food molecule into the cell of your body where they're used becoming part of the cell. Isation means the part of the food molecule you couldn't be able to digest and you couldn't be able to absorb also. So they are coming out as a solid waste or as a pieces through the anus. So this was the definition. Question number Miss, nine. what is pieces? Sorry? Pieces? Yes, yes. What? Pieces means solid waste. <coughs> now, see, uh, there are a few diseases uh, okay. that is one is diarrhea and one is cholera. Thus, diarrhea, the common example you'll be seeing in our country, right? What is diarrhea? The loss of watery feces. The loss of watery solid waste. This is sometimes caused by bacterial reason or some viral infection through the food and water. If you are taking contaminated food and water, you might get some uh, that bacteria or virus in the, which will be present in your body. And this, uh, that uh, diarrhea, you could get this disease. What happened when you are having this diarrhea? The lining of the digestive system has damaged due to the pathogen. The pathogen will damage the lining of the digestive system so your intestine will be unable to absorb food and un undigested food cannot move. So this undigested food then moves through the large intestine too quickly because lots of waters are there, resulting in insufficient time to absorb water. And this is causes diarrhea and also the too much watery uh, that uh, feces takes away the uh, amount of water and lots of key on from your body and it makes your body dehydrated. This is called dehydration. And if a person is having diarrhea problem, there is a treatment, we call it treatment of diarrhea is oral rehydration therapy. You have to be careful the amount of water you are losing, you have to replace it. It involves uh, uh, drinking plenty of uh, fluid, homemade remedies like green coconut water, a uh, yogurt salt, this can be very effective, or even you can take uh, that, uh, Oral saline also, which will help you to restore your water, the amount of water you are losing. So this is diarrhea and the treatment of diarrhea. But the another problem is cholera. This is caused by Vibrio cholera bacterium. This is very uh, uh, dangerous compared to diarrhea. And this treatment sometimes the people cannot do at home. They have to admit the hospital and 
because the treatment involves rehydration and restoration of the salt that has been lost and the patient has to give antibiotics to kill the bacteria. When the, uh, the, through the contaminated food and drink, especially the, uh, that, uh, the developing country, uh, they are not maintaining the hygiene way for the preparation of the food and the uh, water is not uh, that, uh, 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 that clean enough, the pure enough. So when you have, in, any person have ingested this bacteria, this bacteria will multiply in the small intestine and they will embed the epithelial cell. And they also produce a toxin that stimulates the intestinal lining to secrete a large amount of water, salt, also chloride ion. Girls, this ion will accumulate it in the lumen. And you know when the ion will accumulate it means this increases the concentration of the skin in the lumen, right? It will be low water potential compared to outside. So, and then, you know, if any two places, one is high water potential and one is low water potential, you know the water will come out from high water potential to the low water potential. Same thing happened here. So as the lumen and it increases the concentration of the fluid in the lumen, it drawing more water from the surrounding tissue and the blood by osmosis. This makes the undigested food much more watery, leading to acute diarrhea, and the loss of body fluid and salt, which leads to dehydration and sometimes your kidney may failure also. Now, girls, if you want to see this type, uh, one, one diagram from your textbook, please. Uh, that Miss, can you need to... Yeah, one diagram of this. Let me check. You can see uh, page number 88 in your textbook. Page number 88, how the chloride ion causes diarrhea. Here is a diagram. See, the wall of the elementary canal and inside the lumen, the cholera bacteria, which secreted lots of chloride ion. Miss right. uh, 88, page 88. Oh. Have you got it, girls? Yes, miss. Yes, okay, miss. figure 7.25. Figure 7.25, see that you have, uh, in figure 7.23, you are seeing that cholera bacterium, which has been magnified uh, that uh, several times. Now look at the diagram. There is wall of the elementary canal inside the lumen where the cholera bacteria are there. Cholera bacteria means vidrio cholera. So they say that, that C, uh, that cholera bacteria, when they ingest it, they multiply and increases their number. And this bacteria attached to the wall of the elementary canal and the bacteria releases the toxin. This toxin causes chloride ion to be released. Uh, this release of the chloride ion causes water to move into the lumen by osmosis because inside is low water potential than outside. Look at the blood capillary where the water is coming inside the lumen. So there is now a lot of water in your, uh, that lumen. So this causes <clears throat> the blood contain too little cryon ion and this causes huge amount of watery feces. Uh, your, that lot of body fluid will come out from your body and also salt, which causes severe dehydration in the body, sometimes kidney failure also. So girls, this is the till question number 11. I hope you understood this all. <clears throat> Girls, any question from you all? If you don't have question, uh, can I ask you something? Now, I told you that diarrhea, you don't, uh, I didn't tell you the treatment of diarrhea that you need antibiotic, right? But I, in cholera, that I told you that cholera or diarrhea, where I told you that you need antibiotic kill the bacteria. You cholera. need antibiotic. I told you diarrhea or cholera huh? to the treatment. I told that uh, uh, some of you need the homemade uh, remedies. And I to also told you that you need antibiotic to kill the bacteria. So which one you need antibiotic? Cholera. 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 
you okay. need the cholera to kill the bacterium and if okay. the diarrhea is caused by bacteria in that time also in the severe cases doctor are in advising to give the this antibiotic but viral infection you will the doctor will not allow you or not prescribe prescribe to take antibiotic now girls one more thing i want to ask you what is the name of the bacterium miss? which causes cholera miss yes miss miss the, this thing is about to end so i think you should send the next link and then we can start again uh that is still it's showing that uh, time shall i upgrade again yes, yes. Miss. yeah miss okay right. yes miss is done good morning girls we are going to start our class grade 8a and d all of you are here with me and all of you are listening welcome to our online class how are you girls good good yeah. Bye. now uh, that uh, animal nutrition chapter uh, that 7 we have done uh, that 1 uh, to question number 1 to 11 now today i will start question number 12 and this is the question describe the functions of the regions of the elementary canal it means this question you uh, we are going to explain you the whole digestion process from mouth to till the digestion process now let's start what happen uh, when ever you are eating food from mouth to your uh, that uh, rectum till let's start first the food you have ingested the food through your mouth cavity and i told you ingested mean you have taken the food or drink inside your mouth and you will bite the food you will that grind the food with the teeth and the teeth digest the food mechanically you know the differences between mechanical digestion and chemical digestion mechanical digestion you have break down the food molecule into small pieces but Hmm. no enzymes are working on it and food molecule do not change chemically chemical digestion means you have broken down food molecule from uh, insoluble to soluble form by the uh, with the by using enzymes like starch will break down uh, by in presence of carbohydrate enzyme glucose at uh, that different protease enzyme will break down protein to amino acid lipase enzyme break down fat to fatty acids and glycerol and these are the very complex process and there is lots of uh, the steps in between it now whenever you have ingested the food you have uh, that uh, 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 biting the food and increasing the surface area in the time salivary gland secret saliva ha huh. salivary gland secret saliva Uh, so the food is in whenever you were ingested the food you were using your teeth your lips and your tongue the teeth has been bite or grind the food into small pieces increasing surface area the tongue mixes the food with saliva and form it into the bolus which uh, help you uh, to swallow because uh, the salivary gland i told you it secretes three things water mucus and amylase enzyme the water helps to dissolve substances in the food mucus helps to bind the food together and uh, lubricates it so it will be sleepy it will easy to swallow amylase stop the digestion and the starch will break down it maltose see i told you that uh, amylase this is a carbohydrate enzyme it will break down the starch and starch will turn glucose but in the mouth it will not turn glucose because you are not keeping food for a long time in the mouth so amylase they will start the digestion of the starch and they will just break down into maltose finally the tongue rolls the food into the bolus and pushes them into the back of the mouth cavity and you are going to swallow agas uh, everyone open page number 83 figure number 7.17 here we have one digestive system diagram okay and there is a top of there is a peristalsis okay. diagram also. okay this what is the page number 83 83 83 the head yesterday okay and everyone look at the salivary gland 
And here is a salivary duct through which that saliva comes to your mouth. Saliva contain amylase enzyme for chemical digestion of a starch in the food. Also, a liquid uh, that which contain mucus to lubricate the food and make small pieces to stick together. Now, when you swallow the food, there is a small uh, that flap of skin. Uh, girls, look at this diagram. Hmm. The when you enter, uh, that when you swallow the food, uh, uh, to ensure that the food does not enter the windpipe or the trachea and do not uh, that uh, uh, that enter to the trachea when you swallow, this is a flap of skin. Everyone, look at this diagram. Small flap of cartilage actually. It guides the food into the gullet. So the beginning of the swelling uh, action is voluntary. But once the food reaches back of your mouth, swallowing becomes reflex action. See uh, that uh, when you swallow the food, you couldn't breathe because this epiglottis covered the trachea. For the time being so, make sure that the food is not going through the trachea. Food should go through the esophagus. This diagram, look at this diagram, epiglottis covered. Look at there is the black shaded diagram. Huh, so this is the way the epiglottis will cover the trachea. The path. So the food bolus, look at the food bolus, the black round structure, it will go down through the esophagus. And when the food is in the esophagus, what happened in the tank? The food goes down, the transfer of food from mouth to the stomach by a special movement, we call it peristalsis. Look at that figure 7.16. So here I will uh, that yeah, I will show you the that how you will see this thing the diagram from the diagram uh, girls that you know that the way we are taking away the toothpaste from uh, that uh, on your brush if you press from the back the paste comes from the forward right so the elementary canal has a layer of muscles in the wall the fibers of one layer of the muscles run around the canal we call it circular muscle and another one run it's lengthwise, we call it longitudinal muscle. When the circular muscles in one region contract, they make the elementary canal narrow in that region. A contraction in one region of the elementary canal is followed by another contraction just below. So if that a wave of contraction passes hmm, along the canal and pushing the food in front of it, the wave of contraction is called peristalsis. Got it girls, look at the diagram. You will be understanding. I'm telling you again. When uh, that uh, uh, see that uh, back of the food, look, look at the arrow. Huh, the circular muscle contract, making the lumen of the elementary canal smaller and squeezing the food forward. And the longitudinal muscle look the circular muscle position. And in the front side, the circular muscle relax, allowing the wall of the elementary canal to expand. So that's what I'm telling you. A contraction in one region of the elementary canal means here we are talking about this vagus and this peristalsis happen in other parts also. That's why I'm using elementary canal. Uh, this is followed by another contraction just below it so that it uh, creates a wave of contraction passes along the canal and pushing the food in front of it. The wave of contraction is called peristalsis. So now food is going down to the esophagus and end of the esophagus. You check the diagram, girls, there is a sphincter muscles. So anytime food cannot enter to the stomach, when well, it will go down, this sphincter muscle will relax, allow the food to go down, and now your food is inside the stomach. Understood, girls, still this much. I have explained you what happened in the mouth hmm, and in the esophagus, peristalsis movement and the mechanical and chemical digestion in the mouth. Do you have any question? No, miss. Okay, thank you. Now, let's start what happened in the stomach. This stomach produces gastric juice, which contains pepsin. Pepsin is a protease enzyme, which is working in the stomach for the chemical digestion of protein. And also it produces hydrochloric acid to kill the bacteria. And here also peristalsis movement going in the stomach muscle to mix the food, to, uh, to churn the food up, and finally it will be, uh, it will be a chyme. Now, 
I will tell you that look at the diagram and the position of the stomach. This is actually the stomach has this uh, elastic wall with uh, the, this, uh, uh, this stretch as the food collected. So whenever we are eating more or less, our stomach can hold it, right? The pyloric sphincter is a circular band of muscle at the lower end of the mask stomach. Look at the lower end. Ah, there is a, um, again, you are seeing one small uh, sphincter muscle, right? This is called pyro, uh, pyloric sphincter. Ah, pyloric sphincter, uh, I'll write on the whiteboard, you can see. Hmm. Pyloric, the spelling you can see. Pyloric sphincter? Uh, yeah. Oh, I wrote it yesterday. Okay, pyloric sphincter. Uh, that the top one is the sphincter muscle, which was in the end of the esophagus and end of the stomach. There is this uh, another sphincter muscle. We call it pyloric sphincter. Now, the pyloric sphincter is a circular band of uh, muscle at the lower end of the stomach that stop the solid pieces of the food from passing through. So it cannot go. It will like a uh, that uh, stopper. It is uh, stopping the end part of the stomach. The main function of the stomach is to store the food from the meal, the, uh, the food we are eating, because from the mouth it goes to the uh, stomach directly, uh, through the uh, esophagus, right? So uh, that, uh, the, uh, you know, that whenever the food goes to the uh, that is stomach, uh, it turns into a liquid and release into small uh, that, uh, quantities at a time to the rest of the elementary canal. Uh, for example, of the physical digestion in the Peristaltic action of the muscle in the wall of the stomach. These muscles actually contract and relax. It means thus there is a lots of muscles fold around the stomach. So the wall of the uh, stomach, huh, the epithelial layer of the stomach, this muscle all uh, the contract and relax. This churning and squeezing the food in the stomach and mixing with the gastric juice. Gastric juice, I told you, it's secreted by the stomach, which contains pepsin, which contain hydrochloric acid, uh, we call it gastric juice. This turning this mixture into a creamy liquid after churning one or two hours, it becomes a thick liquid. We call it chyme. The action gives the food is greater, uh, increases its surface area so it can digest it more efficiently. You know girls, enzyme, the whole digestion process depends on the enzyme and enzyme work best and faster if you, in, you have increased surface area. So in our digestion process also, the more small pieces, the more enzyme can work faster and the digestion process will be faster. Now, and the glands in the lining of the stomach, which produces gastric juice, contain protease enzyme. And this protease enzyme uh, helps the process of breakdown of the large protein molecule into a soluble form. Sometimes uh, it can break down to amino acids, sometimes it can break down polypeptide. Do not complete the digestion. The stomach lining also produces hydrochloric acid, Hello. which makes it weak solution in the gastric acid, uh, the gastric juices. The acid provides the best acidity no. in the stomach so that the protease can work well. You, you know, enzyme, are, I'll give you the chance to ask me a question. Just let me finish this part. Because as you know that, uh, you know that enzymes are very sensitive to the pH. Some enzymes oh. work well in acidic conditions. Yes, what happened? Sorry? Miss, we suddenly yeah. couldn't hear you. Why? Yeah, all of us. Really? Yeah. You do. yeah. Yes. Can you hear me, girls? Yes. Okay, yes. I will start again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so see the... You heard about the pyloric sphincter, right? Girls, you, I need the feedback so that I can understand you are listening. Just anyone, just uh, give, uh, tell me that you are listening to me clearly. Yes, sir. yes, we are. Okay. So, the main function of the sto uh, stomach is to store the food from a meal, and you know that uh, uh, at the, uh, suppose the physical digestion is the peristaltic action of the muscle in the wall of the stomach. Hmm. The muscle of the elementary canal also contract and relax churning and squeezing the food in the stomach and mixing with the gastric juice. And finally, it will turn into a thick liquid, we called it chyme. This action gives the food greater surface area so that 
uh, that it can be digested more efficiently. Girls, you know that enzyme can work well if its surface area have increased. So the more smaller pieces, the more uh, the action of the enzyme and more quickly or more faster the food will digest it into the molecular form and your body cell can use it to give you the energy. And there are the gland in the lining of the stomach cell which produces gastric juice. This gastric juice contain protease enzyme and hydrochloric acid. This helps the process of breakdown of the large protein into small. Sometimes digestion didn't complete. Sometimes proteins can break down uh, that uh, protein to amino acid. Sometimes only uh, that uh, small pieces couldn't complete the digestion. Uh, that uh, now this uh, after this all, uh, then you know that this protease enzyme couldn't work in alkaline condition. So the hydrochloric acid which produces hmm, uh, that <coughs> the smoke lining also produces hydrochloric acid. This gives a weak solution in the gastric juice. This acid provides the best acidity for the stomach proteins to work well and also girls kill many bacteria which can enter through your food because that's the reason girls we are telling that if you ingested some uh, germs uh, through the food or any kind of things it will die because in the stomach it has lost its acidity is high it cannot survive over there till this much girls are you girls did you hear me are you here uh, can you hear me yes, yes, yes. now the stomach has the wall okay stomach has a strong muscular wall the muscle, I told you, contract and relax to churn the food and mix it with the enzyme and mucus. See, mucus also secreted here. This mixture is called chyme. Now, uh, the stomach will also contain goblet cells. This goblet cells are the cells which secrete mucus. And this goblet cell you will be getting in the, your trachea also. And this also secrete mucus over there also. This also contain other cells which produces protease enzyme and also hydrochloric other cells which makes hydrochloric acid. Hmm. These uh, that the main function of the protease enzyme, uh, that the main enzyme is the pepsin, this start break down them into polypeptide. So sometimes protein uh, digestion didn't complete in the stomach. So it began the digestion by, uh, by, by breaking down the protein into polypeptide. Pepsin work best in acid condition. This acid also helped to kill the, the, kill the bacteria which could enter through the food. And uh, when you know that some mammals are very young, they are not eating uh, different kinds of uh, that solid food the way we are eating. So in that cases, young mammal produces another type of yeah. enzyme. We called it renin. Renin is only produced in the stomach of young mammals because they're actually mainly they're taking milk. Huh. So this causes the milk that they get from their mothers to clot. The milk proteins are then broken down by pepsin. The stomach can store food for quite a long time, uh, near about one to two hours. Later, the bottom, the sphincter, the pyloric sphincter at the bottom of the stomach opens and lets the chyme into the duodenum. Is it clear, girls, the function of the stomach? This oh, notes already yes. I have given. Yes, sir. you have any confusion what happened to the stomach? Let's check our notes. I have given you here the stomach is a muscular bag which churn up the food into a liquid. The stomach will secrete gastric juice. This gastric juice contains the enzyme protease for studying the digestion of the protein, changing them to polypeptides. I told you the protein will change to amino acid, but they need time. So in the stomach, you know that mostly it turns into polypeptides. Stomach wall contain goblet cell, which secrete mucus. This lubricates the passes of the food and protect them from getting damaged by the hydrochloric acid because it can damage the surrounding cells also. So this uh, lubrication do not uh, that uh, help them to damage. Hydrochloric acid, it provides the correct pH for the protease to work and kill the harmful bacteria in the food. The enzyme renin, this work to clot the protein in the milk but it produced only in the stomach of the young mammals, not the adult person. The regular peristaltic movements of the stomach mix up the food with the gastric juice and finally it turned into a creamy liquid, we called it chyme. 
Now, it passes through a ring of muscle called pyloric sphincter, which relaxes and allows the foot to enter into the duodenum. Now, if you look at the diagram, that position of the duodenum. Now, the regular peristalsis movement of the stomach about once every 20 seconds. See, this right. contraction and relaxation. This is the peristaltic movement, right? So about 20 seconds, this mix of the food with the gastric juice and uh, that uh, there are one to two hours, it will be in, the, in your stomach. Now, uh, that water may pass through a few minutes, a meal of carbohydrates such as uh, you, whenever you are eating any carbohydrate, curries or like that, it will handle the stomach more than an hour. That's why uh, you will be seeing the different food, it takes different uh, that time to, uh, that how long it will be in the stomach, right? Because it takes time, Some uh, that water will pass very quickly, carbohydrate will take uh, that, uh, 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 that less than an hour, but if you are taking a meal with the protein, fat, maybe it will take one to two hours, it will stay in your stomach. Understood, girls? Our stomach function? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Any question? Nope. If you don't have any question, let me ask you, tell me two functions of hydrochloric acid. So what did you ask? Two functions of stomach. I told you too much. Stomach produces hydrochloric acid. Could you please tell me two functions of hydrochloric yes, acid? It will kill, kill the bacteria. bacteria in the bacteria. It kills excellent. Kills Zara, yes, Zara Zubair. Miss, what? it kills bacteria and excellent. Help it's from my speech. Excellent, Saida. Excellent. Thank you. So, see, my yeah. girls are uh, that answering yeah. correctly. It's really nice to hear uh, that feedback from you all. Thank you. The main function of the hydrochloric acid to kill the germs which may enter through the food, and also the second function is it is giving the correct pH. It is giving the correct pH for the pepsin to work well because I told you enzymes are very sensitive with the pH. Some enzymes work well in acidic conditions, some enzymes work well in neutral condition, some enzymes work well in basic condition, alkaline condition. So if you change the, that uh, pH, the enzyme function will affect it. Sometimes it becomes slow down, sometimes it can stop also. So this acidic condition huh, gives you know that uh, uh, the, you know that makes the pepsin to work faster now uh, i told you also that whenever you are that how long the food will be inside your uh, stomach depend on what type of food you have taken so uh, that uh, uh, depend on its nature actually water may pass through it you know in a few minutes that uh, whenever you are eating a meal with carbohydrates like porridge and this kind of only carbohydrates that will uh, be inside your stomach less than an hour, but whenever you are taking a meal which contain protein, fat, hmm, different types of uh, that uh, nutrients, so it will take one to two hours in your stomach, but not more than. So after one or two hours later, the pyloric sphincter relaxes and lets the liquid produces product to digest it. Uh, 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 you know that all the liquid, the kind. Okay. Uh, that uh, liquid product of the digestion pass a little time into the first part of the small intestine. We called it duodenum. Now, everyone look at the di uh, diagram of phase 83 and check the position of the duodenum. And you can understand from the stomach now the thick liquid is inside the duodenum. Clear? Go to the next phase, girls. 84 and you will be seeing here one diagram 7.18 a gastric pit look at the gastric pit which means to do with the stomach who is this Mm, I need to close. Eat this kind of. Miss, miss, oh my God, not again. This is seriously serious. This is not Omaima. 
Miss, this is not Omaima. Miss, this is a boy. Yesterday, they came to our English class with Mr. Fifa. They started doing the same thing. Yeah, Miss. Miss, Miss, just mute us all. Who is this? Miss, it shows that Omaima. Miss, these are some guys disturbing us. Miss, this is a guy pretending to be Omaima so that we don't, um, you know, so this is, is it Omaima, shall I close Omaima? Yes, miss. 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 Yes, Problem always around us. We have to know how to overcome. Just ignore girls. Now look at this diagram. Seven point eighteen. Here, look at the muscular wall in the stomach, the cell which makes mucus, and the cell which makes pepsin. Look at the diagram, girls, and the cell which makes hydrochloric acid. See, in the stomach wall, they have different different cells which is making mucus, making pepsin, and also making hydrochloric acid. Look at the layer of the uh, that uh, mucus. And the lumen of the stomach. This is we call gastric pit. Hmm. So gastric means to do with the stomach. I hope that you have seen the diagram, girls. I need yeah. feedback from you. Yes, Miss. Yes, Miss. Have you seen the yes, diagram? Yes. So yes, I told yes. you the different different cells in the stomach will produces these all, and the diagram is uh, uh, giving you the idea that how the different cells are arranging in the muscular wall of the stomach. So we have 10 minutes left. After that, I will give you the link again and you will join with me again, okay? Now, uh, I want to uh, that, uh, tell you about uh, what happened, uh, the food in the Diranam. But before, the, before starting the Diranam, girls, I want to tell you about the pancreas. Look at this, go back to page 83. Here is a yellow color, one leafy structure you are seeing. This is actually pancreas. This is pancreas, mm. and this pancreas uh, has a great role in our digestion. Now, if I want to start the, you know, that uh, digestion in the. Oh my God! Who is this now? Oh. Okay. This is uh, Zara Zubair is showing. Zara. No, 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 no.